हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज उपेंद्र फ्रॉम ग्रीनलैंड कॉन्वेंट स्कूल सेक्टर 32 चंडीगढ़ रोड लुधियाना टुडे वी विल डू चैप्टर 3 फ्रॉम फ्लेमिंगो एंड द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज डीप वाटर बाय विलियम डगलस दिस चैप्टर टीचेस अस हाउ वी कैन ओवरकम आवर फियर वीकनेस और एनी डेफिशिएंसी वी माइट हैव डेवलप्ड सो द ऑथर शेयर्स विद अस हाउ ही ओवरकेम हिज फियर ऑफ वाटर through practice and strong will so by applying the author's formula in our life we can reap huge benefits in self improvement each one of us has some fear so if we allow those fears to develop further they can seriously harm our life so uh, by learning some tips from this chapter we can overcome any fear we have so before we proceed any further let's know a little about the author so william douglas was born in maine minnesota after graduating with a bachelor of arts in english and economics he spent 2 years teaching high school in yakima however he got tired of this and decided to pursue a legal career He met Franklin D Roosevelt at Yale and became an advisor and friend to the president. So Douglas was a leading advocate of individual rights. He retired in 1975 with a term lasting 36 years and remains the longest serving justice in the history of the court. So the following excerpt excerpt means extract is taken from of men and mountains by william o douglas that is william douglas wrote a book named of men and mountains and this chapter is an extract from that book so it reveals how as a young boy william douglas nearly drowned in a swimming pool so in this essay he talks about his fear of water and thereafter how he finally overcame it notice how the autobiographical part of the selection is used to support his discussion of fear dear students uh, i have taught this chapter time and time again to so many students and each time i uh, you know teach this chapter i i learn new things from it so this is the beauty about this chapter so i want you to be at your very best to extract the best out of this chapter now the chapter begins so kindly pay attention now note down each frame has two parts this part where the text is written and the second part here which has a picture uh, this picture will be giving you a bit of imagery uh an idea or the images that are created in the text so i will be explaining the text uh so let's start all the best so it had happened when i was 10 or 11 years old so the chapter as you know is an extract from the book so it will start suddenly that is it won't have a you know very smooth beginning it will start suddenly so the chapter starts the author is telling us it had happened when i was 10 or 11 years old that is when the author was just 11 or 10 years old an incident happened to him and here is the incident i had decided to learn to swim there was a pool at the ymca in yakima that offered exactly the opportunity kindly note down why mca stand for young missionary christians association i am saying it once again young missionary christian association this associate association is dedicated to provide you know sports facilities and other activities to the youngsters so yakima is the name of the town where the author lived so at the age of 10 or 11 the author decided to learn to swim and 
he decided that he would learn the swimming at YMCA swimming pool, right? Because the Yakima River was treacherous. Treacherous here means dangerous. So the author had two options to learn swimming. One was at the swimming pool and the other was the Yakima River. Now Yakima River was very dangerous. So he uh, did not, uh, you know, choose the river. Mother continually warned against it and kept fresh in my mind the details of each drowning in the river. Besides, the author's mother also wanted him to learn the swimming at the YMCA pool because there had been repeated incidents of young children drowning in it. Those children who went to have a dip there, they, some of them drowned there. So the mother reminded the author uh, uh, of those incidents to discourage him to go to the river. But the YMCA pool was safe. It was only two or three feet deep at the shallow end. So here is a swimming pool, you know. Here is the shallow end. Shallow end is from where we enter. And as we go further in the pool, uh, it becomes deeper and deeper. So the Yakima, uh, you know, sorry, not Yakima, the swimming pool, YMCA pool, uh, was nine feet deep at the deep end. Uh, at the shallow end, it was just two or three feet deep, right? And while it was nine feet deep at the other, the drop was gradual. The drop means the slant of the floor of the pool. I got a pair of water wings and went to the pool. Water wings means some swimming uh, accessories which we have to wear in order to learn swimming. So the author went to the swimming pool to learn swimming. I hated to walk naked into it and show my skinny legs. So this line tells that the author was quite skinny. Skinny means thin. So he did not want people to, you know, look at his uh, thin body. So, but still he had to learn the swimming. But I subdued my pride and did it. So in spite of his thinness, the author decided to you know, learn the swimming. Subdued means I suppressed my pride. So from the beginning, however, I had an aversion to the water when I was in it. Now in this line, the author tells us ki he had some hatred, aversion. Kindly note down the word aversion. Aversion means hatred, hate, dislike. So the author had dislike against the water. Uh, this started when I was three or four years old and Father took me to the beach in California. So this dislike against the water started when he was three or four years old. Actually, his father had taken him to California. And when they were standing at the beach, a huge wave came and knocked him down. So at that time, he was drowned in the water temporarily. And at that time, the fear was instilled in his heart. The fear was instilled in his heart. So he and I stood together in the surf. Surf here is the water, uh, which has lots and lots of froth. Froth means jhag in it. So I hung on to him, yet the waves knocked me down and swept over me. I was buried in water, so my breath was gone. I was frightened. Father laughed, but there was terror in my heart at the overpowering force of the waves. So, uh, these lines tell us ki how the fear of water developed in William Douglas' heart. Actually, it developed when he was three or four years old at the beach. So, from this we learn that as we grow old, we also come across many uh, sad or uh, painful situations which, uh, you know, instill fear in us. And if we don't uh, tackle that fear, that fear keeps on growing and may become a great obstacle in our life. So my introduction to the YMCA swimming pool revived unpleasant memories and stirred childish fears. So we see when at the age of 10 or 11 he went to the YMCA pool to learn swimming, his child 
hood fears were revived that is the fear that he had developed at the age of 3 or 4 remained with him and look at the age of 10 or 11 when he went to the swimming pool that fear again became active but in a little while i gathered confidence but he author got confidence i paddled with my new water wings watching the other boys and trying to learn by aping them so after he joined the ymca pool the instructor there made him practice and uh, as he practiced he started gaining confidence i did this two or three times on different days and was just beginning to feel at ease in the water when the misadventure happened so he had uh, you know hardly gone to the swimming pool for 3 days and practiced and started feeling confident when something again bad happened something negative happened misadventure here is an accident happened so now the author will be sharing with us what that accident was i went to the pool when no one else was there i have already told you he didn't like being seen because of his thinness because of his skinny uh, body so he had the habit of going to the pool uh, before anyone else came there so he was alone at the pool the place was quiet the water was still and the tiled bottom was as white and clean as a bathtub i was timid timid here means uh, fearful about going in alone since uh, the author had not learned the swimming completely so he was afraid of going into the pool alone so i sat on the side of the pool to wait for others so the author started uh, waiting for others to come uh, i had not been there long when in came a big bruiser of a boy so the author had been sitting at the edge of the pool you can see here the image like this see it is just uh, uh, a you know uh, a picture that give you an idea not the exact picture of the author so you see here is a swimming pool and a boy sitting here alone right so when he was sitting like this a big bruiser of a boy that is a big a uh, muscular type boy came and he was probably 18 years old he had thick hair on his chest and he was a beautiful physical specimen with legs and arms that showed rippling muscles so that boy was i have already told you quite a muscular body and as he saw the author sitting alone he yelled he yelled yell me screamed at him hi skinny how would you like to be ducked that is the the 18 year old boy that muscular boy said to the author i will throw you into the pool and let's see how you feel now you must be wondering ki why he decided to throw the author into the pool let me tell you uh, youngsters you know indulge in lots of mischiefs uh, without knowing their consequences so he also must have felt uh, you know uh an urge to do the mischief so he decided to throw the author into the pool so he not only said it to the author with that he picked me up and tossed me into the deep end and see that boy that muscular boy picked the author up and threw him into the deep end you know what is deep end deep end means where the pool was 9 feet deep so you can imagine if we fall into a uh, water and we don't know the swimming water deep water what will happen to us so i landed in a sitting position swallowed water and went at once to the bottom slow slowly and slowly at the deep end the author started going down towards the bottom of the pool so i was frightened so you see i was frightened that childhood fear became very active but not yet frightened out of my wits so that author had got frightened but not completely frightened out that is he he still had uh, you know his uh, uh, senses 
with him that is he knew how to save himself so on the way down i planned so this was his planning when my feet hit the bottom i would make a big jump come to the surface lie flat on it and paddle to the edge of the pool so this was the plan that the author made that when he would uh, go towards the bottom of the pool when he would touch the pool he would jump from the pool bottom and then try to come to the surface and somehow try to reach the edge of the pool and get out of the pool so it seemed a long way down that is he slowly went towards the bottom of the pool those 9 feet were more like 90 and before i touched bottom my lungs were ready to burst you know but uh, we human beings need oxygen to keep on living so inside the water we can't breathe so his lungs he felt his lungs would burst but when my feet hit bottom i summoned summoned means i collected all my strength and made what i thought was a great spring upwards so as soon as the author touched the bottom of the pool he jumped but it was not an efficient jump you know uh, in water we can't jump so i imagined i would bob to the surface like a cock bob means come to the surface of the water so author had thought that this jump would help him but no it didn't instead i came up slowly uh, and it, the author didn't come up fast or immediately he started coming up very slowly and i opened my eyes and saw nothing but water water that had a dirty yellow tinge to it tinge means color and when he the author was coming up he opened his eyes and looked upwards and he saw the sunlight and he saw the water and the water was a little yellowish in color so while coming up to the surface of the water the author grew panicky i grew panicky i reached up as if to grab a rope and my hands clutched only at water so in panic the author raised his you know arms and uh, try to hold on to something but there was nothing only water was there i was suffocating suffocating means in the lack of oxygen uh, or in the lack of air uh, he was feeling choked so i tried to yell again he tried to shout but no sound came out then my eyes and nose came out of the water now here pay attention the author's nose and eyes only came out of the water at the deep end but not my mouth so he had thought that when he would reach surface he would somehow try to you know uh, struggle up to the edge of the pool and climb out of the pool but see his plan failed i flailed at the surface of the water so when he came a little bit at the surface of the water he flailed flailed we struggled hard but nothing happened and then some water got into his mouth and he choked i tried to bring my legs up but they hung as dead weights paralyzed and rigid and he tried to raise his legs out of water but they didn't come out uh, they were appearing as if tied with some very heavy weights and kind of paralyzed you know paralyzed uh, paralyzed organs are those which don't work a great force was pulling me under so naturally when you are at the deep side and if you have come up you will again go down so uh, the author started going towards the bottom of the pool the second time so i had started on the long journey back to the bottom of the pool now he is going towards the bottom of the pool the second time i struck at the water as i went down while going down he made a lot of effort to get out of the pool to stay up at the surface but he didn't so when he was making those efforts he expended his strength that is he used the energy which he had and you know when we use energy we consume oxygen it means the little uh, oxygen that was in his body was also used up right so 
I struck at the water as I went down, expanding my strength as one in a nightmare fights an irresistible force. So nightmare here is a bad dream. You know, sometimes when we are sleeping, we have nightmare, uh, bad dreams. And in that, by a bad dream, we have some unpleasant experiences. Though they are uh, illusionary, but uh, at times we get up choking. So I had lost all my breath. My lungs ached. That is, his lungs were in pain. My head throbbed. I was getting dizzy. Dizzy means... Uh, his head was uh, feeling giddy. Giddy means his head was circling. Uh, but I remembered the strategy. But he still had, you know, uh, his common sense on. But he still was conscious. And he uh, had that plan. And the plan was the moment he would reach the bottom of the pool, he would jump up and come like a cock to the surface. I would lie flat on the water, strike out with my arms and thrash with my legs. Legs. Then I would get to the edge of the pool and be safe. That is, he he uh, he had that same plan, and the plan was to jump uh, from the bottom of the pool, come to the surface of the water, lie flat, and somehow reach the edge of the pool and get out of the pool to save his life. Let us see whether he. Uh, in his second attempt upward he succeeded or not now he is going towards the bottom of the pool the second time so I went down down endlessly I opened my eyes nothing but water with the yellow glow dark water that one could not see through so you can see here in this image this is how he felt see it's a very appropriate image so and then sheer stark terror seized me, terror that knows no understanding, terror that knows no control, terror that no one can understand who has not experienced it. So while going down from the bot towards the bottom of the pool, the author felt very, very scared. And this type of fear can only be understood by those who have experienced it. So I was shrieking underwater. I was paralyzed underwater, stiff, rigid with fear. All these lines are telling his fear. Even the screams in my throat were frozen. That is, he could not even shout. Only my heart and the pounding in my head said that I was still alive. So the author was quite near, uh, you know, death. But his heart was still pumping and his head was pounding. So he knew that he was still alive. So and then in the midst of the terror came a touch of reason. I must remember to jump when I hit the bottom. So you know it is the second time he will be touching the bottom of the swimming pool. So he managed to remember that what uh, plan he had to execute. And that plan was you know jumping by you know by, by pushing the tiles downwards. Uh, and uh, go up to the surface so at last i felt the tiles under me my toes reached out as if to grab them i jumped with everything i had so the author you know tried to make a very you know energetic jump a strong jump but the jump made no difference the water was still around me i looked for ropes ladders water wings nothing but water a mass of yellow water held me stark terror stark means complete terror took or took an even deeper hold on me like a great charge of electricity i shook and trembled with fright my arms wouldn't move my legs wouldn't move i tried to call for help to call for mother nothing happened so you know even in the second attempt his jump was not as effective as he had thought so the jump made little difference now he was desperate to, you know, get out of water uh, because there was no oxygen in his system to help him continue living. So uh, the fear became deeper and deeper and his body, entire body became paralyzed and he wanted to call for mother. You know, whenever we are in trouble, the first person we remember is our mother. So he tried to call for mother, but mother was nowhere around. 
and nothing happened he remained in that critical situation which he had been thrown into by that you know muscular boy of 18 years well you must remember this is the second time he is going upwards towards the surface of the uh, pool water and then strangely there was light i was coming out of the awful yellow water at least my eyes were again in the second attempt his eyes got a little out of the surface of the water my nose was almost out to and his nose maybe half also came out of the uh, water but again nothing happened then i started down a third time so even in the second attempt the author could not get out of the pool because he didn't know how to swim besides the fear had taken complete control over him so then i started down a third time now this is the third time he is going towards the bottom of the pool so i sucked for air and got water and as he tried to inhale his body tried to inhale water you know because he was inside water water got into his system the yellowish light was going out then all effort ceased now here uh, students pay attention now the third time he is going downwards his body is out of oxygen now that is he has no oxygen left in his system now he will slowly and slowly become unconscious and in this unconsciousness he you know even he decided that he would rather now die than save himself so i relax see since there was no oxygen in him he uh, the lack of oxygen was making him unconscious so the author also relaxed even my legs felt limp limp means not active and a back blackness swept over my brain see a blackness swept over my brain this is lack of oxygen uh, you know causing the blackness uh, over his brain it wiped out fear and quite strangely when he was becoming unconscious he stopped feeling fearful it wiped out terror there was no more panic it was quiet and peaceful nothing to be afraid of this is nice to be drowsy to go to sleep this is what he felt no need to jump too tired to jump it's nice to be carried gently to float along in space tender arms around me whose arms death sam tender arms like mothers now i must go to sleep so the author decided that now he had no hope of any rescue so he would now rather die than save himself so he willingly you know let his body go loose he decided that he would go down towards the pool bottom lie there and die so i crossed to oblivion and the curtain of life fell now dear students pay attention here towards this line i crossed to oblivion oblivion is a place of forgetfulness uh right and the curtain of life fell so curtain of life fell means life was over for the author you will be amazed to know that william douglas died for a few moments yes it is true so the curtain of life fell but the next i remember i was lying on my stomach beside the pool vomiting quite miraculously after a few moments his eyes opened and when his eyes opened he found himself lying on his stomach beside the pool vomiting and he was vomiting and somebody said the chap that threw me in was saying see rather the chap means that muscular boy who had thrown douglas into the water you see what did he say but i was only fooling means i was only having fun i uh, that muscular boy said that i was only having fun with douglas someone said and there were some other people at the pool now and one of them said the kid nearly died be all right now let's carry him to the locker room so 
they decided to carry him to the locker room and there he changed that is he changed his clothes uh, he put on his uh, casual clothes several hours later i walked home and after that he went home i was weak and trembling and when he was going towards home he was feeling so weak and trembling i shook and cried when i lay on my bed and he reached home and he went to bed he lay there uh, uh, and uh, you know he started crying because his fear had made him feel so weak and uh, miserable i couldn't eat that night for days a haunting fear was in my heart the slightest exertion upset me making me wobbly in the knees and sick to the stomach now here wobbly means weak and uh, haunting means a uh, fear that keeps us chasing so even after that after so many days of that incident the author didn't feel good at all he kept feeling fearful he kept feeling scared he kept remembering that uh, you know incident that had happened at the uh, yakima swimming sorry not yakima ymca swimming pool and wobbly means he felt weak at the knees that is he didn't like being alive i never went back to the pool i feared water so you see that fear which he had developed at the age of 3 or 4 and which he had tried to overcome at the age of 10 or 11 that fear further got deepened in his heart now if now he grew up with that fear a few years later when i came to know the waters of the cascades i wanted to get into them and whenever i did whether i was wading the teton or bumping river or bathing in warm lake of the goat rocks the terror that had seized me in the pool would come back so you see here in these lines the author is telling us that fear grew with him even when he became a young man and whenever he went to picnic with his friends whenever they went near any water body a uh, waterfall or a lake or a river his friends enjoyed but whenever he tried to get into that water body uh, that old fear came into his heart and made him miserable and he would immediately come out of that water it would take possession of me completely my legs would become paralyzed i see horror would grab my heart so this handicap stayed with me as the years rolled by so you see that fear made william douglas life miserable he could not enjoy his life he could not enjoy being with his friends he could not enjoy picnics so in canoes on main lakes fishing for landlocked salmon he could not even enjoy you know uh, boating or canoeing or fishing on rivers or on lakes uh, he you know because that fear would not allow william douglas to go near any water body bass fishing in new hampshire trout fishing on the duche and metolius in oregon fishing for salmon on the columbia at bumping lake in the cascades wherever i went the haunting fear of the water followed me so these are some of the proper nouns that is names of places where he went for fishing or for picnicking uh, uh, so wherever he went that fear followed him and that fear ruined my fishing trip see the author is mentioning it ruined my fishing trips deprived me of the joy of canoeing canoeing means uh, boating boating and swimming so you see the effects of uh, not overcoming our fears they make our lives miserable so if we have any fear they make our life hell so it is always wise to overcome one's fear now the beauty of this chapter lies in the section from now onwards now here we'll see him you know making all efforts to overcome his fears so i used every way i knew to overcome this fear but it held me firmly in its grip finally one october i decided to get an instructor and learn to swim see so the author you know was very sad 
very unhappy and he was very uh, you know uh, miserable and he decided that he must overcome his fear so finally one october he decided to get an instructor and learn to swim i went to a pool and practiced 5 days a week and hour each day so you see he took the right step so the fears can only be overcome if we you know make some strategy to overcome them otherwise they will never ever be overcome they will uh, make us further weaker uh, more unconfident and more miserable so the instructor put a belt around me so it was a you know a uh, special experience for him he confided everything to his instructor and the instructor made a special strategy the instructor put a belt around me a rope attached to the belt went through a pulley that ran on an overhead cable he held on to the end of the rope and we went went back and forth back and forth means uh uh means forward and backward uh back and forth across the pool hour after hour day after day week after week so the instructor made a special you know equipment for uh william douglas to train him swimming uh he put a belt around his waist and the belt was attached to a rope uh that you know uh was fixed above the uh, or over the pool and William Douglas practiced regularly every day every hour and week after week on each trip across the pool a bit of the panic seized me and as he you know uh, attached to that uh, rope through the belt went uh, back and forth in the swimming pool the old fear tried to grip him but um, since there was the belt attached to the rope which kept him afloat uh, that help him uh, you know stay calm and normal and uh, he kept on practicing this way for many many days so each time the instructor relaxed his hold on to the rope and i went under some of the old terror returned and my legs froze so you see the instructor at times relaxed the you know uh, rope and at when the instructor did so the author went inside the water and the moment he went inside the water again that old fear would come and his legs would freeze it was 3 months before the tension began to slack so kindly note down it was 3 months before the tension began to slack it means the author took 3 months to overcome his fear slightly then he taught me to put my face under water and exhale the instructor taught him how to inhale and exhale when uh, you know swimming and to raise my nose and inhale so i repeated the exercise hundreds of times kindly pay attention if you want to overcome your fear you need to repeat your exercises hundreds of times bit by bit i shed part of the panic that seized me when my head went under water so slowly and slowly he started overcoming his fear next the instructor held me at the side of the pool and had me kick with my legs now the instructor made him do another exercise that is kicking uh, the water with his legs for weeks i did just that at first my legs refused to work but they gradually relaxed and finally i could command them and slowly slowly through practice he learned to command his legs in the water thus piece by piece he built a swimmer and the instructor worked very hard he trained the narrator very hard and slowly and slowly the narrator learned swimming skills and he became a good swimmer and when he had perfected each piece he put them together into an integrated whole and when he had taught him all the swimming skills in april he took his test that is he gave him his test and the test was now you can swim dive off and swim the length of the pool crawl stroke so this was the test given by the instructor he made him stand on uh, at the deep end of the pool and asked him to dive and then go and come uh, you know to the point where he had jumped so i did the instructor was finished and 
the author swam the length of the pool perfectly that is the instructor was very happy with the narrator or with the author uh, so instructor said to the author you have learned swimming you are perfect now now our swimming classes are over now this section of the you know the concluding section of the chapter is again very beautiful it tells us the you know positive outlook of the author so when the author had mastered swimming skills from his instructor he gave himself challenging tasks that is the author gave himself challenging tasks and what those tasks were but i was not finished look the instructor was finished but i was not finished i still wondered if i would be terror stricken when i was alone in the pool now the author wanted to make it certain that he had overcome his uh, fear of water by giving him himself some challenging tasks and these were the task which he gave himself first you see he went to the pool himself see when i was alone in the pool the author went to the pool alone and he tried it without the instructor and he swam the length up and down alone you see the difference earlier he was swimming the length of the swimming pool in the presence of the instructor now he did the length of the pool by himself there was no one at the swimming pool and when he was doing so tiny vestiges vestiges means tiny signs or tiny you can say uh, marks of the old terror would return but now i could frown and say to that terror trying to scare me hey well here is to you look and off i would go for another length of the pool so in order to you know make it further uh, certain that he had learned swimming he swam the length of the pool alone many times but i was still not satisfied i was not sure that all the terror had left now the author wanted to check further what would happen if he himself went to uh, a lake and swam all by himself so he gave himself another task first task was he wanted to see whether he could alone swim the length of the pool or not he did it successfully so the second task he gave himself was swimming a, a swimming 2 or 3 miles in a lake and in order to see his confidence he went to lake wentworth in new hampshire dived off a dock at triggs island and swam 2 miles across the lake to stamp act island so you see he did it successfully he swam 2 miles across uh, lake wentworth and that was another achievement so so after this he gave himself so many tasks that is i swam the crawl breast stroke side stroke and back stroke only once did the terror return so when i was in the middle of the lake i put my face under and saw nothing but bottomless water so when um, you know when he was uh, swimming 2 miles across the lake he put his mouth into the water and try to look into the lake and what he saw was water water everywhere and at that time also the fear of water tried to fill his heart but the author had learned enough swimming skills to tackle that you know fear and when the fear tried to fill his heart the author said well mr terror what do you think you can do to me and the moment he said this to the fear it fled and i swam on the fear ran away and the author completed his task yet i had residual doubts and look he gave himself more task at my first opportunity i hurried west went up to the titan to conrad meadows up the conrad creek trail to mead glacier and camped in the high meadow by the side of warm lake so he went to all these places where he had felt scared earlier in order to be sure whether he had overcome his fear or not and the next morning i stripped stripped means i took my clothes off 
dived into the lake and swam across to the other shore and back, just as do Corprone used to do. So I shouted with joy and Gilbert Peak returned the echo. So when Douglas completed even this task, he became so happy and it was a surety, it was a proof that he had overcome his fear of water. And when he shouted with joy, the Gilbert Peak returned the echo of his joy. I had conquered my fear of water and the experience had a deep meaning for me as only those who have known stark terror and conquered it can appreciate it. In death there is peace. So you see, you can imagine the joy William Douglas must have felt when he had overcome his fear. And this joy can be felt by only those who have overcome their fears. And uh, you know, even William Douglas had even tasted death for a little while in the swimming pool. So in death there was, he had felt peace. So this is the last frame that is uh, now we are at the conclusion of the chapter. We are at the end of the chapter and there is a message for all of us. There is terror only in the fear of death, right? So in death is peace, but in the fear of death, there is terror. So as Roosevelt knew when he said Roosevelt, uh, you know, William Douglas friend who was also the president of America. Once Roosevelt had said, all we have to fear is fear itself. That is, if there is anything in this world that we should be afraid of, it is fear, nothing else. So because I had experienced both the sensation of dying and the terror that fear of it can be, uh, that terror of fear, sorry, I am repeating this line again. Because I had experienced both the sensation of dying and the terror that fear of it can produce, the will to live somehow grew in intensity. So the author here says, since I had tasted death, my desire for life became stronger. At last I felt released. So you see the power we feel when we free ourselves of our fears. We feel free to walk the trails and climb the peaks and brush aside fear. We live a new life after we overcome our fears. So uh, this was the chapter which... Uh, uh, from which we learnt that how important it is to overcome our fear and we can learn from the author's example that is uh, the fear which we have we must face it we must practice in order to overcome it that's all thank you very much and uh, i hope you will make best use of this chapter thank you very much